In the face of popular unrest and security threats, some governments take the drastic measure of ordering internet service providers to simply shut off access countrywide. When governments suspend internet access, it provokes international outcry because the internet has become essential for the free flow of information. Internet shutdowns can also run afoul of national laws that protect citizens' freedom of expression. To avoid condemnation or circumvent legal constraints, some governments are turning from shutdowns to slowdowns. Throttling internet speeds instead of suspending service altogether can be difficult to detect and draw less international attention. But slowdowns still pose serious problems, especially for those in the business of informing the public. Take the case of the Indian central government's policies in the restive region of Jammu and Kashmir. On August 5th, 2019, India's parliament revoked the article of the country's constitution that granted the region special autonomous status. To preempt unrest, the government deployed tens of thousands of soldiers, placed Kashmiri political leaders under house arrest, and shut off the internet and phone networks in the Kashmir Valley. When the Indian government wants to shut down the internet, it simply orders service providers, whether local companies or multinational firms like Vodafone and Airtel, to block data transmissions in and out of the region. Whatever the commitments of those companies to their customers and to internet freedom, their licenses to operate in the country and use cellular frequencies require them to follow government orders. Under Indian law, shutdown requests are supposed to be temporary emergency measures, but the Kashmir ban was sweeping and interminate. Anuradha Basin, the executive editor of the Kashmir Times, worked out of the newspaper's Jammu office. Landline internet remained connected in Jammu, but she was suddenly cut off from staff outside the city and from the Kashmir Times office in Srinagar, Kashmir's capital. At least, uh, you know, 9 million out of 12 million people in Jammu and Kashmir pushed behind an iron wall. There were no voices to be heard. We had no communication with our staff force. And so that that lack of communication meant that no stories were going to come out from there. And our reliance was only on official handouts or whatever was being reported by other uh, you know, news agencies from then. Landline phone service, though not mobile internet, was restored after a month. And the government set up what it called a media facilitation center in Srinagar. A room with a handful of internet connected computers and telephones for well over a hundred journalists to share. These were all government computers, so they were all under surveillance. Their names were being noted, their phone numbers were being noted, details also of people they were calling, they were also being really noted. They couldn't work freely. The Kashmir Times was able to restart its Srinagar print edition in October, though even distributing copies of the newspaper was difficult due to a travel lockdown that accompanied the communications lockdown. In the meantime, Basin petitioned India's Supreme Court to restore internet to the region. The court ruled in January that internet access was protected under the right to freedom of speech and expression. The government was not allowed to continue to curtail internet access in Jammu and Kashmir without providing the public with a reasonable justification and time frame for restoration of service. In the weeks following the verdict, the government began to restore internet service, but not at the previously ubiquitous 4G speeds. Mobile data, the way most users connect to the internet in Jammu and Kashmir, was capped at 2G speeds not much faster than old dial-up modems. When users could connect, they might be able to check email and texting apps and read text-based web pages, but sharing audio or visual content was nearly impossible. At first, the government also safe-listed only a few websites and blocked access to most of the internet. That policy looked enough like censorship 
to draw significant national and international condemnation. And the government eventually did away with the safe list. Although it continued to throttle bandwidth, the Indian government could then claim that people had unrestricted internet access. We are relaxing everything and we will be in, in coming days also, you will see every year the normal communication uh, technology and communication channels will be opened. The government has since ordered brief shutdowns on occasions of political unrest or fighting with insurgents, but largely favoured the lower profile slowdown policy. That approach has been a public relations success. International coverage and criticism of the Indian government's regional internet policy has waned. The global news database Factiva shows an average of more than 2,000 monthly news stories that incorporate the words Kashmir and internet, published from August through January. Since February and the government's change to a slowdown strategy, an average of less than 1,000 stories with those terms have been published per month. Communication difficulties continued for the Kashmir Times, especially in covering rural areas where local, on-the-ground reporting from independent outlets is especially important. In the rural areas, it continues to be problematic because greater reliance here in this part of the world is on this mobile internet. So when the mobile internet is reduced to 2G, you know, our reporters and stringers uh, who are working out of uh, the rural and the semi-rural areas, where connectivity as it is remains very poor. So it, uh, we often miss out on uh, news and, 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 you know, or, or get it delayed or you don't have enough details because uh, the reporter was losing his connectivity. The COVID-19 pandemic has exacerbated the problem limiting reporters' ability to travel and connect with sources offline, even as the pandemic has made accurate reporting and access to information all the more essential. Around the world, news outlets have seen their web traffic increase significantly during the pandemic, but the Kashmir Times online readership has remained far below last year's levels because of throttling. The Foundation of Media Professionals, a civil society organization based in Delhi, filed another petition with the Supreme Court for the restoration of 4G services. The government's lawyers argued that because the policy related to national security and counter-terrorism, the Supreme Court had no jurisdiction. The judges agreed that the government was in violation of citizens' constitutional rights, but rather than ordering the end of internet throttling, asked the central government to form a committee to review its own policy. It left it to the government to judge its own ban. You know, <laughs> the government imposes a ban and the court is asking the government to take a decision on it, whether this should be removed or not. The pattern of government slowing the internet without fully shutting it down is growing around the world. When judicial oversight and checks on state control over internet service providers are lacking, governments can throttle internet with impunity. Most internet service providers are reliant on local authorities for licenses to operate, which gives authorities a huge amount of power in determining how their services are run. In practice, this means ISPs have very little power in resisting authorities' demands to slow their internet speeds, even though it goes against their own economic self-interest. This is particularly true in countries with a nationalised telecommunications infrastructure, although throttling also often occurs in countries where local ISPs are run by private companies. This August 5th marks a year of slow to no internet in Jammu and Kashmir, as well as the region's official incorporation as a union territory under direct control of the central government. The occasion is sure to be marked by protests and a security crackdown. But don't expect to watch them live streamed.